Good Monday morning coming up here on GMA. We'll start with the heat. Yes, we're still dropping those consecutive heat records all the way from the desert southwest into Florida. So, you know, I'll be covering that, but also a real bulge of heat up here into the Midwest and Great Lakes. They haven't even had much summer, so we'll talk all about the heat spreading. And then we're here for our seventh inning snack series. It's going to be a great morning as we kick off uh, the hunt for the best food at stadiums around the country. I got to throw out the first pitch here at the Guardians game at Progressive Field in Cleveland. Uh, we've got a, a lot of hot dogs to consume, so I hope you're ready. Join us on GMA. Well, ahead in the next hour, GMSA, you've heard about subscriptions for things like Disney Plus or Hulu, but what about bagels? Why a small business in town is hoping their new service can keep them from shutting down. Lux, the longest running live conjunto music venue in Texas, is reopening with a whole new purpose. What the former Westside Club is doing now to serve our community. And up next, drug smugglers keep thinking of bizarre ways to sneak in their stuff to the U.S. border. What agents found this time over in West Texas. And let's take a look right now at TransGuy. Still have a closure at 10 and Callahan. We'll get an update from Stephen coming up. This is morning on GMSA. San Antonio police still searching for a suspect accused of stealing a work truck and ramming it into someone's jar. The bizarre details from the scene. Plus. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. The Justice Department giving Texas an ultimatum, remove the floating barriers or face a lawsuit. Texas Governor Greg Abbott has until this afternoon to decide. The details coming up. And looking out there with a live cam this morning, 75 degrees, not bad, not bad. And no complaints from a lot of people about yesterday's weather. Uh, it was very nice with some rain and some people just got cloud cover, but it was a nice little break. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. Hope you had a great weekend. It got some rain. It is Monday, the 24th, and I think we th should thank Steph. She came back from the coast yesterday <laughs> and she brought a few showers with her. Well, I did my best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, we were driving in. It was a treat for us to see the cloud cover you coming, see them coming, com in. coming into San Antonio. We're like, yay. It was very exciting it for a lot a, of people. It was a victory for those who got rain. Some got a, a lot, but, and plus some gusty winds. Yeah, too. but ironically, you didn't get any rain. At Not at my house, but mm. like I said, I was happy with just the cloud cover. Thank mm, you nonetheless. Yeah, hey, I'm there for you. Uh, yeah, very blustery and actually uh, one storm did become severe for a moment up in uh, Bandera County mm -hmm. yesterday afternoon and we had some very strong winds, did do some uh, tree damage around the area and some parts, especially on the northwest side and west uh, side, just around 1604 and outside that picked up uh, anywhere from inch and a half to close to two inches of rain yesterday and right now we've got a lot of clear skies out there. Temperatures, we are now down to our normal low. We really don't have a heat index that much to deal with here in town. Uh, 80 is the only number, at least on this graph, up in the uh, 80s, or excuse me, Canyon Lake, the only recording area, reporting area up in the 80s as far as a heat index this morning. Easy for me to say there. Mold is on the moderate side, probably going to be staying a little bit uh, higher when the updated count comes out, just given the fact that there is some moisture in the ground from some of that rain yesterday. We do have heat advisories once again posted today, going to effect at 1 o'clock till 8 o'clock for our southeastern counties, just because the humidity is going to be staying higher down there to the uh, south and east and not as high here in uh, San Antonio, kind of west of the I-35 going out into the hill country. So we are in the mid 70s right now. A couple of morning clouds, otherwise mostly sunny skies and then make it up to 90 at noon and we will top off. Now yesterday with the cloud cover that moved in, that kept us just shy of 100. We stayed at 99 and then right after that, that was early in the afternoon, temperatures dropped into the mid lower 90s and even 80s with some of those uh, that rain cool there and some of those outflow boundaries from some of those storms. Not going to be the situation today. 101 high temperature. So we ended our consecutive streak of triple digits, but now we're just going to start it all over again all the way through this week. There may be little hope down the down the road toward the weekend. More on that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, you had those uh, problems earlier. Is that still going on? Well, we're adding more to the list, Mike. Unfortunately, I-10 at Hearman Road. Let's get a wider look at TransGuide. This is over on the northwest side of San Antonio. We have those flashing lights, and they are off in the show on the pardon me, the frontage road, as you can see that we have a few lanes that are blocked at this hour. Now, I talked to our friends at Transguide. It doesn't look like this is impacting the main lanes whatsoever, but for anyone that is exiting around Camp Bullis Road, 
be on the lookout for that crash. We are seeing the flashing lights out there again on the frontage road. I'm not seeing any delays in that direction, but I 10 eastbound is an area a lot of folks travel through in the morning, so be on the lookout and be on the lookout here. If your travels take you through I 10 westbound uh, right here, we have a closure due to a water main break that was reported overnight. This is at exit 561 medical drive Wurzbach Road, and again, it has not caused any issues for drivers out there, but the closure has been lasted has lasted for several hours, so if we still see that in place, it could cause some delays for your morning drive time. Now, thankfully, I'm not seeing any other issues that are being reported, just a lot of the scattered construction that's always expected right here in the Alamo City, and if you're traveling into San Antonio, just take your time. It's a pretty pleasant drive from Pleasanton. 37 northbound is what you can expect about a 30 minute drive time, and the same goes for US 90 eastbound if you're traveling in from Castroville this early in the morning, and the arrival from Lytle along I-35 northbound should be about 17 minutes. But let's get it back here. A different shot at Trans Guide shows the commute is getting busier along the eastbound lanes of I-10. We'll keep an eye on those flashing lights, and let's hope everyone's doing okay out there. I'll, I'll have another update coming up a little bit later on. Mark. See you in a bit. Thank you, sir. New details this morning on the search for a suspect who San Antonio police say stole a truck and rammed it through someone's yard. Take a look. This all happened Sunday in the 900 block of West Pyron Avenue, just off I-35 South on the south side. The truck had construction equipment on a trailer and the owner was getting ready to leave when police say the 30 year old suspect ran up and stole it. The suspect lost control of the truck nearby and rammed it through a fence on someone's property. No one was hurt. However, police were not able to catch the suspect. Another person is in the hospital this morning after getting hit by a car. San Antonio police say a 30 year old man was a victim of a hit and run near New Laredo Highway and West Gerald Avenue late Saturday night. Police haven't found the suspect or the SUV they were driving, but we do know that suspect vehicle is silver. If you know anything about this hit and run crash, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers. And police still searching for two men. They say stole clothes and shot through a store's glass door to escape Saturday night at North Star Mall here in San Antonio. Security told uh, guards told SAPD two men stole clothes from a store and ran upstairs to escape. One suspect shot out a locked glass door to get out. The gun was left behind and no injuries were reported. Now to an active silver alert. Have you seen this woman? This is 75 year old, 75 year old Olga Martinez and she's been missing for almost a week. She's about five foot two, has brown hair and brown eyes and she does have a medical condition. So if you know where she could be, you're asked to call the San Antonio Police Department. That number is on your screen, 210-207-7660. Looking ahead, mark your calendars for this Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. KSAT is airing a special on fentanyl. It's called Fighting Fentanyl. It's everyone's problem. You'll see how the drug comes in through our border, what Customs and Border Protection does to stop it, and how the DEA is going after people who sell it. The goal is to help you start a conversation with your kids about fentanyl so you can help keep them safe. Again, the special is this Wednesday night, 6.30, right here on KSAT 12. After it airs, you can watch it on our website, our YouTube channel, and on KSAT+. Plus. Well, the Department of Justice is on the verge of suing the state of Texas for that large floating buoy barrier at the southern border. The DOJ claims the devices violate federal law, also raises humanitarian concerns. As ABC's M. Wynn reports, Governor Abbott has until 2 o'clock this afternoon to either remove the barriers or face legal action. This morning, the Department of Justice with plans to sue the state of Texas for deploying floating barricades at the southern border. The DOJ in a letter to Governor Greg Abbott writing the state of Texas's actions violate federal law, raise humanitarian concerns and may interfere with the federal government's official duties. The department demanding Texas remove the barriers or face legal action. They do have a valid lawsuit under the statute. And the governor's just acting on his own. In a series of tweets, Abbott defended his border enforcement efforts, blaming President Biden and saying Texas is stepping up to address this crisis, adding, we will see you in court, Mr. President. But some Texas Republicans are raising concern for the state's latest deterrent tactics. It's not acceptable. Representative Tony Gonzalez acknowledging the dangers at the U.S.-Mexico border, though ultimately siding with the governor's actions. 
I think you're seeing the governor do everything he possibly can to secure the border. This says the inspector general and the Texas Department of Public Safety investigates allegations of inhumane treatment of migrants following a letter that became public last week, which recounted a patrol where state troopers were allegedly given orders to push children back into the river and refuse water to migrants amid scorching temperatures. Officials in the department claiming the whistleblower misinterpreted the order. If a member from one of our leadership or a supervisor tells a trooper to push back migrants, what that means is to verbally tell them, go, go to a port of entry. The Texas State Trooper, ABC News learns, has been on the job for more than five years. Abbott's office previously saying Texas is deploying every tool to deter illegal crossings. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. In your morning headlines, customs officials on the southern border arrested a man who tried smuggling cocaine into the U.S. using wheels of cheese. It happened in Presidio, just west of Big Bend National Park. Take a look. Authorities say the 22-year-old suspect told them he had cheese wheels in his truck, but when he drove through the x-ray scanner, officials saw almost 20 pounds of cocaine hidden inside the cheese. Border Patrol also found dozens of pounds of cocaine inside an ice cream machine last month near El Paso. Meanwhile, three people are in the hospital after a small plane crash north of Austin on Sunday morning. The plane crashed into an empty two-story home in Georgetown just before noon. Now, the Georgetown Fire Department says all three people on the plane were taken to the hospital, and they are all expected to be okay. Fourteen Republican candidates are running for their party's presidential nomination in 2024. And now seven have met the polling requirements to appear in next month's presidential debate. Former President Trump currently leading the pack. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, a distant second in many polls. Other candidates include former Vice President Mike Pence, former South Carolina Governor and former U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Nikki Haley. Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina will be on the debate stage with former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. The debate will be held August 23rd in Milwaukee. Right now, 610, 75 degrees. And still to come before 630, Elon Musk says he is making another big change at Twitter. How it could look a lot different in the next few months. And after the break, the first signs of football season training camp is finally here for the Dallas Cowboys. We've got a preview of what fans can expect this week. Looking out there with the live cam, fairly nice morning. We're at 75 degrees. Good Monday morning and hope you enjoyed that rain yesterday. We'll be right back. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys officially reporting to training camp in Oxnard, California today. Dak Prescott ready to lead the offense with hopefully fewer interceptions and more touchdowns. The offense will look different this year without Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard coming back from injury. The O-line may be missing Zach Martin, who wants and has earned more money. He's been the best and most consistent O-lineman for nine years. Former Steel Knight and Texas Tech Red Raider Terrence Steele coming off a knee injury and may or may not be ready for the start of camp. It's also new offensive coordinator Brian Schottenheimer. Our Larry Ramirez will also be reporting to camp along with the players and the coaches. So here's a look at the schedule. Players arrive today. Tomorrow will be the State of the Cowboys address from owner and GM Jerry Jones. First practice is Wednesday, followed by a walkthrough on Friday. Saturday will be the training camp's official opening ceremony, and the players are off Sunday. However, Jerry will be joining us on instant replay, so you don't want to miss that coming up this coming Sunday night. Also, don't forget Houston Texans very excited with the new mm -hmm. head coach D'Amico mm -hmm. Ryans and a top draft choice quarterback arriving to play for the Texans this year. Yeah, exciting news for both our Texas Absolutely. teams. Absolutely. Very good. Time now, 6.15. Let's check back with our Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, I'm seeing way too many flashing lights out there this early in the morning, guys. Now, while Transguide shows us a pretty smooth commute for the most majority of people, check it out. We still have that closure at I-10 at Callahan West. That is due to a water main break. And don't forget, we also have a crash that was reported along I-10 at Hureman Road. You can see it there along the frontage road. Those flashing lights, uh, again, reported by uh, TxDOT a little bit earlier this morning. And we are seeing uh, traffic is moving along the main lanes without any 
any trouble, but it is a pretty busy spot, so watch out nonetheless. This is along I-10 eastbound right at Camp Bullis Road. You may see those flashing lights on your way into the downtown area if your travels take you through here very early in the morning. Be on the lookout and let's hope everyone's doing okay. Drive back here into town. We showed you this earlier. The water main break was reported overnight at I-10 westbound. The exit 561 Medical Drive and Wurzbach Road closed as crews are working to make the repairs. We've not seen any issues with traffic, which is good, but unfortunately there's no word yet on when we're going to see that exit ramp reopen. The wide look of the map does show a lot more construction is expected to ramp up a little bit later this morning and later in the week. Let's talk about what's happening here along State Highway 151 on the west side of San Antonio. We have road work that will begin tomorrow, July 25th, and it wraps pretty quickly Wednesday, July 26, 9 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon. During that time, we will see single lane closures on the eastbound frontage road from Petranca Road to Ingram Road. Scan the QR code because, again, I updated the list of traffic closures on our website. It's ksat.com slash traffic. There is a full list of closures that are happening in all different areas of the Alamo City. So just know what to expect before you have to hit the roads. But uh, again, this morning has been off to a little bit of a bumpy start for a lot of folks that are out there this early. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, buddy. You're welcome. Thank Big you. name in Schottenheimer. Learn yeah. the pedigree from Marty, Marty Schottenheimer. Marty, yeah. longtime coach. Of course, the head coach uh, for the Chiefs. Chiefs for, for a long, long time. time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think he was with the Dolphins way back when with on their offense, back in the, the glory days of the Dolphins. Right. So yeah. and it's weird not hearing Ezekiel Elliott's name. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, I, my, and if I recall, just in the last week, nobody's picked him up yet. Really? No. Not yet. Interesting. Yep. And with the Texans getting that Ohio State quarterback. I know. It's going to be a kid, great year for Houston. Yeah, that kid was, was good at Ohio State. So. Yeah, nice. All right. Let's talk weather right now. <laughs> and uh, more pictures of the gorgeous rain. This was over there on the west side, over there on Westover Hill, Hills. One of our regulars, Yvonne, threw that in there, about three quarters of an inch of rain. And some folks over there on the west and northwest side got a little more than an inch, almost twice this much, close to two inches of rain. So thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. All right, as you can see, it's starting to, well, maybe try to lighten up a little bit out there. Looking uh, right there, 10 at 410. 75 degrees here in town. One of the lower more low temperatures we've had around here in a while. That is the normal low and we don't have that much of a heat index to deal with. All right, let's look at the climate prediction center for the next six to 10 and then eight to 14 days. Little bit encouraging going into the first uh, maybe week or so of August with a slightly better than 50 50 chance of seeing some um, above normal precipitation, but still on the hot side and then going further into August. Yeah, a little bit of precipitation out there or at least a slightly better than 50 50 chance of seeing some normal precipitation in the first week of August and not quite as good a chance of hot temperatures, but it still does look like we are going to be staying on the hot side going into the month of August and obviously finishing up July on the hot side. So we got to jump ahead because yeah, we had the rain yesterday and then between now and the end of the week, nothing's going on. We'll have a couple of morning clouds, morning humidity, afternoon sunshine, uh, some lower humidity and tri triple digit temperatures. But what we're looking at by Friday is hopefully a few more of these sea breeze showers try to uh, pop up around here. And then as you can see, even a couple of more clouds around on Saturday, a couple of more clouds around on Sunday. Now, despite this model not having any rain showing up, any sea breeze, that's going to be the subtle changes that are going to be taking place by the end of the week. So what's going on? There's the high. It had slid off just off to the west enough to get us into this northerly flow, and that's what brought in those couple of showers around on Saturday, a couple of showers or a few more than just a couple yesterday with some of those uh, heavier downpours. Then the high moves back on in here, kind of sets up on top of us again, but it's going to be just in a position to where we're going to see this little bit of a wave come in here from the Gulf of Mexico. So that's the hope that the Gulf something's going to develop. At least we'll have the, the door open to the Gulf of Mexico to give us a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms around uh, by the weekend, by late Friday into the weekend. And then, of course, the hope being that some of those do make it in westward a little bit more coming into Steph's yard, my yard, since we didn't get any rain. <laughs> So. Sorry about that. I was watching, and it looked like that one cell was going to come right down I-10. I there was one from the north, and they just both went like, 
Yeah, yeah. we were ready. They're we were like, look, there's Mike and Steph's houses. <laughs> we'll just kind of like, skipped over it. What did you guys do or say to those no. storms? Well, I don't know. I was excited well, about the cloud cover. Yeah, yeah cloud I, cover. I blame you. Oh, we'll get it next time. 621, 75 degrees. We'll be right back with your consumer headlines. Martial arts is my passion. I work out whenever I can. But with my moderate to severe eczema, it can be tough. My skin was so uncomfortable. The itching was so bad. Now I'm staying ahead of my eczema. There's a power inside all of us to live our passion. And Dupixent works on the inside to help heal your skin from within. It helps block a key source of inflammation inside the body that can cause eczema. So adults can have long lasting, clearer skin and fast itch relief. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. Healing from within is a powerful thing. Ask your eczema specialist how Dupixent can help heal your skin from within. Top of your morning consumer news and another change for Twitter. Elon Musk tweeted yesterday he's ditching the Bluebird logo for the letter X. Look at the new symbol. It will go further in transforming the global town square, he says. Twitter's lost nearly half its ad revenue since Musk's takeover. And it turns out that threads may not have been the huge threat everyone thought it would be. The number of daily active users for Meta's new platform has reportedly plunged 70%. This comes after its peak just over two weeks ago. And after a rapid rise in signups, new data shows that just 13 million people are actively engaging on threads. Okay, check this out. A soda fan favorite from a while back is back. Coca-Cola discontinued Sprite Tropical Mix in 2005, but you can now enjoy it again. It's available on Amazon. You ready for this? 24 pack of 20 ounce bottles goes for $59. The beverage described as tasting like Sprite with a hint of strawberry and pineapple. Hmm. And before we go to break, you can donate school supplies to help teachers start the year on the right track. The Right Start Project supports teachers in the Judson and Somerset Independent School Districts. We have information on how you can help on our website, kset.com. You can also head to the KSET Community section of our website. And seniors or people with disabilities can request a box fan at no cost by calling United Way at 211. The box fan program relies on donations. If you want to help, you can donate to the purchase of a 20-inch box fan. And we have the drop-off locations on ksat.com. And time now, 627 and 75 degrees for now. Still ahead of 630. Good credit, something we all need, whether we like it or not. How you can boost your score if it's lower than you'd like. This morning on GMSA, the longest running live conjunto music venue in Texas is reopening with a new purpose. What the former West Side nightclub is doing now to serve the community. And you've heard about subscriptions for things like Disney Plus or Hulu, but what about bagels? How small business in town is hoping their new service can save them from closing their doors. And looking out there with live cam, beautiful shot right now. And we were all cheering yesterday, like if we got Wimby again. It was like, yay, we got some rain. Yeah, that's true. Very exciting yeah. day. <laughs> it was a very big deal. Good morning, everybody. 6.30 on your Monday. It is July 24th. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a wonderful weekend. And we hope you got rain. I know Mike didn't get rain, but you got that cloud cover. Yes. And likewise, yes. no rain, but cloud cover, mm -hmm. nothing, uh, no cloud cover this morning. Just a beautiful, beautiful sunrise on tap. Lots of clear skies out there and actually temperatures aren't that bad. 75. That's the normal average low temperature. We haven't been down there in a long time. Dew points at 69, so it is below 70, which is not bad. We haven't seen dew points that low in a while, especially in the morning hours. So you have those temperatures 75, 77 Canyon Lake, 60s in parts of the hill country. Humidity now it's a little bit higher, obviously around Randolph, uh, Pleasanton, Canyon Lake. But as far as the heat index, 
there is nobody reporting in the 80s right now. Canyon Lake actually dropped down. So yes, it is a, a, a more pleasant morning out there, which is very, very nice. Mold is on the moderate side and the updated count, of course, is going to be coming out in about an hour or so, which I suspect will stay moderate just given the fact that we had some of that rain around the area yesterday. We do have heat advisories that go into effect one o'clock till eight o'clock for our southeastern, about southeastern third of the area, just because more humidity is still going to be sticking around down here to the southeast later on today. So warm and humid this morning, although just about what you would expect this time of year. So not too awfully bad. 101, plenty of sunshine today. That's going to be the situation throughout the rest of the week. Low hundreds and lots of afternoon sunshine. Then by the weekend, well, it's still going to be hot, but there is going to be a chance for a stray shower storm. We're looking at a little disturbance trying to move in here from the Gulf of Mexico. So basically some sea breeze showers. Hopefully a few more of those decide to uh, visit further westward. But that's kind of wishful thinking right now. Details on the, the week ahead. The last weekend of July already is right around the corner. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, what's going on, sir? It's been a busy morning, Mike. You know, typically we don't see a lot of issues out there this early, but we are spotting them. Tenant Hearman Road, we still had the crash that was reported. I'll step out of the trans guide camera shot so you can see those flashing lights that are on there uh, along the frontage road. This is along I-10 eastbound, and I've been keeping a very close eye on it for the last uh, 30 minutes or so, but it does look like it may have cleared out. We had a few lanes blocked there along the frontage road, and in fact, in the, within the last few seconds, it does look like that scene has cleared out. But we still have those road flares in place. Be on the lookout. No word yet uh, if there was any injuries or how many vehicles were involved, but let's hope everyone was doing okay because we didn't see any closures there or is significant delays reported along the main lane since it was on the frontage road, but this was heading eastbound. So a lot of folks tend to travel through the main lanes every morning. So again, anytime an issue pops up, we'll let you know about it. And we are still watching this closure. It was reported overnight due to a water main break along I 10 westbound. This is exit 561. I've been talking about it all morning long, and it does still look like we have those barrels out there. Remember, this is medical drive Wurzbach Road. We have the crews out there working to make the repairs, and as soon as it opens, we'll let you know, but be on the lookout for that. If you have to exit there, make sure to look for a different route. It could cause some delays for your morning drive. Giving you a wide look, though, of our map, there has been a lot of construction I've been talking about all morning long. Thankfully, none of it has slowed folks down. As you take a look at some of these travel times, we're green across the board. And again, uh, the morning commute has been off to a little bit of a busy start. I'm going to watch things closely. I want to see if I can bring that trans guide camera shot up for you here. There it is, that closure at I-10 westbound. This is still in place and as soon as it reopens, I'll let you know, but just know what to expect before you have to head out the roads. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. The investigation continues in what caused a house fire this weekend here in San Antonio that killed three people and left three others in the hospital. But today the fire department's focus will be on preventing these types of deaths. Our Katrina Weber is live near downtown with that story. Katrina, we understand the fire chief Charles Hood will be driving home that message later today. Well, that is right. The chief has a news conference planned for this afternoon to talk about, among other things, the importance of having working smoke detectors. The firefighters say there were none in that home this weekend. And what they did find were six people desperately in need of help when they arrived in the 16,600 block of Winding Oak Drive. That street is in a neighborhood not far from Loop 1604 and O'Connor Road. The fire broke out around 3 o'clock Saturday morning. Firefighters pulled all six people, including three adults and three children, out of the home. But before the day was over, three of them, two adults and a child, had died. The medical examiner still has not released any other information on them at this point. Firefighters say it looks like the fire started in the garage, but they did not say how it started. The chief Hood's news conference about smoke detectors and other issues concerning this fire is set to start at 2 o'clock this afternoon. Reporting live near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Now to a new silver alert that went out overnight. Have you seen this man we're about to show you? 69-year-old Leonard Wilson vanished Sunday afternoon near a gas station outside of Hempstead, which is just northwest of Houston. Wilson described as being 6'1", 210 pounds, with black hair and brown eyes, wearing a purple shirt with blue jeans and beige shoes. He was driving a silver Chevy Malibu with the license plate RFT. 9606. If you know where he is, 
Call Hempstead Police at the number on your screen. That's 979-826-3332. Meanwhile, University Health, a uh, brand new women's and children's hospital is close to opening. And it could be a game changer for many families in our area. Irene Sandate is the chief nursing officer of the new women's and children's hospital and joined leading essay to explain how the new facility can serve the community. Irene joined us and we talked about a lot. We talked about why this new hospital is needed. We talked about how long it's been in the works and we talked about how our increase in population and increase in local families, why that was really the catalyst behind these plans. Take a listen to the conversation. Many clinics out in our community to serve the citizens of Bear County and San Antonio. Uh, and uh, we saw growth, substantial growth uh, in the number of women seeking prenatal care with us. In addition to serving San Antonio, uh, we also serve the region as well. And so with the projected growth of San Antonio over the next decade, uh, and also in our attempt to create better spaces for moms to connect with their babies, our families to stay connected with their children that were hospitalized. Uh, our leadership, um, you know, made a great decision several years ago uh, to, to embark on this project. You can check out our full discussion right now. Just head to the Leading Essay section of KSAT.com. We have Leading Essay every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. So, guys, we'll see you next Sunday. Back to you. Thanks, Max. So, Westside Nightclub reopened its door Sunday as a new cultural center. It was the longest running live Conjunto music venue in Texas, and the trad tradition and culture behind Conjunto music will be passed on with accordion classes for every age, every Saturday. The building was set to be demolished in 2010, but community support sparked by the Esperanza Peace and Justice Center saved it. The city of San Antonio and Bear County each pitched in $500,000 to preserve the building's historic and cultural significance. Lerma's nightclub was and will continue to be a West Side community hub. The daughter of the original owner, Rachel Lerma, says that's what her father would have wanted. He just, uh, he believed in people. He believed in building up the neighborhood. He believed in community. Now, so far, 150 people are on the waiting list for accordion classes at Lermus. Students range from 9 years old to 90 years old. The building will also serve as a digital library. You've heard of subscriptions for magazines and streaming platforms, but have you heard of one for bagels? One San Antonio small business is hoping subscriptions can save them from shutting down entirely. Bubby's Jewish Soul Food closed its storefront Saturday. After nearly two years, the owners say day-to-day -day sales couldn't beat the cost of running the store. But this isn't the end. The bakery and bagel shop now looking to create a subscription service to continue. One owner says he's sad to see the storefront closed, but he's excited to try out this new service. It's definitely sad that it's it's coming to an end, but it's uh, I'm very proud of what we did here. The subscription service is only in its early stages. Owners say they'll be in contact with customers on their email list this week about developing a plan moving forward. Right now, 640, 75 degrees. And here's a look at what's coming up next. Unfortunately, there's not a one-size-fits-all solution on that. It takes diligence. Our credit is something we all have to pay attention to. So after the break, some simple things you can do to boost your credit score. Welcome back. Exactly 644. Your credit score can build you up and it can tear you down. It has an impact on almost every big purchase you can make and can be affected by almost every little purchase. So how do you boost your score? Leslie Hudson has some answers. Credit. We all have it. Some good, some bad. No doubt about it. We all need it. Credit is the ability of someone to borrow money. Bad or fair credit, which is between 580 and 669, can be a result of late payments or using more than 30% of your credit limit. Fortunately, taking steps to improve your credit can help you lower the cost of borrowing. Unfortunately, there's not a one-size-fits-all solution on that. It takes diligence, it takes patience in order to improve your credit score. The first thing that we would advise folks to do is actually get a hold of their credit report from the three credit scoring agencies. Pay your credit card balances strategically. Pay down the balances before the billing cycle ends and... Make sure that the accounts that you have have 
have a long length of time to them. So you don't want to go and pay things off too quickly because that reduces the amount of age that is associated with that particular credit item. Also, blend your credit. Lenders like to see that you can handle multiple accounts at once. Lastly, you want to make sure that you don't apply for credit too often. That pulling of credit actually winds up uh, potentially reducing your credit score if you do that too frequently. With ways to boost your credit, I'm Leslie Hudson reporting. 645. Yeah, apparently reports of a car fire. Let's check back with our mm -hmm. Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, this is uh, just came in from our friends over at Transguide. We are seeing a pretty big uh, blockage there along I 410. This is heading westbound around State Highway 151. I'll step out, take that shot in for a minute because you can see that we have first responders out there. And Steph, I think you caught this earlier. They were still working to douse some of the flames from the hood of that vehicle. Uh, no word yet on exactly what sparked this vehicle fire, but I'm hoping everyone's okay out there because it's uh, we're seeing about three lanes that are blocked at this time and you can see traffic is already picking up there along Loop 410. Uh, looks like to be just one vehicle, so I'm not spotting anything else other than just that fire unit and uh, looks like a San Antonio police officer may also be on the scene. We're going to watch it closely, but uh, if you're heading along Loop 410 westbound lanes or heading north, you'll see a little bit of delay right around State Highway 151. Now, no big backups have been reported elsewhere, but I'm still watching other areas of town. As you see here, the big closure along I-10 westbound is still in place. Exit 561 block due to a water main break that was reported overnight. So if you are going to be maybe exiting in that area near the medical center, just start looking for a different route. It could cause a delay for your morning drive time. The overall wide view of the map doesn't show anything else is happening, which is great. We're starting morning rush, but it uh, looks like we're starting with some issues out on the roadway as we take you back here to 410 at State Highway 151. Uh, yeah, it all, at first I thought that uh, there were scorch marks on the road. You could see a few of that. Uh, a few of those lanes look a little bit darker there, but that just may be water uh, that crews were using to douse some of the flames from that vehicle. So that's good news. And it looks like the fire unit just left the scene. So we have to wait for the record to get there as well. We've got a good shot yeah, from Transguide. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks to our friends over there. Yeah. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. All right, going back to the 8th of the month, all the way through Saturday, the 22nd, we had triple digit temperatures. So that put us into Second place, a tie for second place as far as 15 consecutive days with triple digits. We did hit 104 yesterday, or excuse me, on Saturday, and that put us, like I said, up to a tie for second place. So we start counting again, and it was those clouds yesterday that put a lid on that. We hit uh, 99 early on in the day, and then the cloud cover moved in, and of course temperatures were knocked down with some of those storms out there as well, and some of the, the rain-cooled air and those outflow boundaries, so that's what uh, knocked temperatures actually down in the 80s by late afternoon. We've got a lot of clear skies right now. 75 degrees, 73 at uh, Randolph, 77 up the road, Canyon Lake, and as far as, uh, once again, the uh, 8 to 14 day outlook, it is going to be staying on the hotter side, even as as we go in through the first week of August, but then rain chances will be close to normal rain or at least a 50 50 chance for for that. Nothing too much on the dry side. So that's the the, the trend is continuing on basically. Now, as far as jumping ahead, we will have a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms uh, coming in here on the sea breeze by late in the week and by the weekend. So what we're looking at is once again, one of those minor shifts in the overall pattern. That's what gave us some of that rain late Saturday, gave us some of the rain yesterday as well. Just a subtle little change in the overall pattern. So that's going to be the case on Saturday as well as Sunday with those extra clouds hanging around in here. Again, here's what's going to be going on right now. The high was just off to the west of us, put us in this northerly flow, picked up some of those uh, that energy, threw it on in here Saturday. Yesterday gave us some of that rain. Now the high is going to strengthen a little bit, sort of build back in, almost sit right on top of us, keep us on the, the hot side, low hundreds going in through the rest of the week. But what the, the hope is, is a little bit of a wave around that clockwise rotation, then everything comes in from east to west. So we call them these easterly waves, if you will, that it's going to be coming in here from the Gulf of Mexico. That the hope being that that will give us a little chance for some rain once we get into the latter part of the week and going into the weekend, because between now and then nothing. We're just going to start chalking up triple digits once again. 
101s the next few days, 100s by the end of the week, uh, perhaps a bit more in the way of humidity in the afternoons as well later on toward the end of the weekend. But that 10% chance for basically just sea breeze shower thunderstorm, which doesn't really equate to a lot. Hopefully something would push in a little bit further, but yeah, no big uh, overall changes to the weather, pa weather pattern. All right, well, hopefully a little bit of relief. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. 650, 74 degrees. And it is now the second leading cause of death for those under 35. Tomorrow on GMSA, why there has been an uptick in suicides and what can be done to prevent it. Outside with live cam as we start off our Monday morning. Nice sunrise out there as we take a look at one of the interchanges out there on the northwest side. You're watching GMSA. August is going to be here next week, and that means it's time for football. So we are almost a month away from our second annual KSET Pigskin Classic. And this year, it's even bigger than last year. Two days of high school football action instead of just one. You can see the teams taking part in the Pigskin Classic behind us. But here are the matchups. It all begins Friday, August 25th, with Antonian taking on Holy Cross at 7 p.m. Then our big triple header on Saturday, August 26th. So that will start with Southside versus Somerset at 11.30 a.m., then Jefferson versus Uvalde at 3.30 p.m., and O'Connor versus Brandeis at 7.30 p.m. to wrap up the day. It's going to be a fantastic time, and all the games will be taking place at the Alamo Dome. That's right, and you can get your tickets right now on KSET.com, or if you're a KSET insider, you can purchase your VIP experience tickets for the best seat in the house. And we will be out there for the KSAT Pigskin Classic, so we'd love to see you there. Yeah, it should be lots of fun. And the time now is 6.55. Let's check back with our Stephen Cavazos. Well, we are hoping to see some progress here along Loop 410 at State Highway 151. Steph, you see that we have first responders still out there. There were reports of a vehicle fire that uh, we led to three lanes being blocked. Earlier, San Antonio Fire Unit was there, and it looks like we are seeing progress, but uh, not a whole lot of it. We're waiting for a wrecker to arrive to the scene to tow the truck or the vehicle away, but uh, it's causing a little bit of an issue for drivers out there. If you're heading north along Loop 410 around State Highway 151, you will see a little bit of a backup. But don't forget, we also have the closure along I-10 westbound right there. Exit 5661 is closed due to a water main break there, Mike. And the sun is coming up over the horizon right now. Beautiful start to the day. It is 75 degrees out there at the airport. That's the normal average low temperature. First time we've been down there in a long time. Humidity is not bad. It is uh, going to be a little bit higher, though, later on this afternoon. And that's why the heat advisory is down to the uh, southeast. We will make it back up to 101. Of course, we broke our string of triple digits yesterday. But we will continue counting them all the way through the week. Maybe... Seabury shower too coming in here by uh, the weekend. No, I was I, you caught me off guard. I was thinking about all the the matchups coming up yeah. in last year's Pigskin Classic. Mm -hmm. What a great day! I oh, mean, just yeah. the excitement and the tons of people and the bands and football and, and everybody cool. who was there said they had a blast. Yep. So yeah. be there. Times two this year. We'll see y'all at nine.